Hey guys, how's it going? Today is a wonderful kind of spring-like day, kind of one of the, the first ones we have where it's kind of nice. I went out with just a light jacket today and it was really nice, the sun shining, it's it's just really nice weather here right now and I hope it is for you guys too. I hope it's not too rainy or not too cold or not too hot or I don't know, maybe you live in Florida or California or something where it's just kind of perfect all the time. But for me in Idaho, we got all these seasons. It's been good weather. So I've been happy with that. I've also been happy with hate. I'm going to get into that in my first impressions review starting now. Okay, so the first pro is obvious. You cannot talk about hate by Cool Man You're Not without talking about the components. And my goodness, am I overall quite impressed. The miniature quality is fantastic. It's right up there with the, you know, the, the top tier guys of Monolith and whatnot, just kind of leading the pack of miniature quality and what I would expect from Cool Man You're Not at this point. They've really, really stepped up their game. Though. Since A Song of Ice and Fire, I feel like Cool Man You're Not has really ramped up the quality of their miniatures and I've been happy to see it as a painter. Now one thing I was worried about was if they were too busy perhaps as a painter but uh, I, I'm I'm actually really excited for it. It looks like everything's crisp when it should be and detailed and dynamic and they're, they're doing a bit more of a assembly because they're actually doing a bit more that aren't just single mold and I do appreciate that. I think they're getting better at the assembly as well. There's always room for improvement, but very satisfied with the miniatures. And then because this is Kickstarter exclusive, you just get all these, it feels like a collector's item. It really does. You have, you know, these wonderful dice and you get these really, really great uh, uh, sleeves for your cards to hold like your scars and upgrade in. You saw those in the unboxing. I was kind of pulling them and everything. They are fantastic. A little bit of a glare, but that's okay. Uh, just fantastic. All the all the tokens are pretty much 3D, and they all look great, and they feel great. They got a nice texture to them. Very happy with that. Except for one thing. There was one bummer that I've had that I think other people have, and I'm not even going to talk about the shipping. Shipping is shipping. They should have added a lid to the uh, to some of the trays that they didn't, but. Um, lesson learned there, but the board, the actual game board itself, you get two of them in each box, fantastic, you get enough stuff to play two games at the same time, that's great, uh, however, it's it doesn't lay flat, it doesn't lay flat for me, it doesn't lay flat for others, and uh, that's kind of a bummer, everything else about this game is fantastic, and then the board is just kind of blah? Like it's not warped. It just like where where the uh where the where the fold is. It it just uh doesn't <laughs> doesn't doesn't flatten down, uh for whatever reason. And you can't like flip it to the back and do it inverted. Though it just you know be like that I suppose. Anyway, uh so that is probably the only bummer in the components. The rest is fantastic and overall very satisfied with it. Now one of the other nice things I like about this game is that the game rules and mechanics are pretty straightforward. They're fairly self-explanatory and they're easy to understand. I was able to teach this to somebody who has never played a skirmish game before and somebody who has played Warhammer before equally as well. I mean, they just you can pick up on it easy. And there's just some nice stuff like movement. Movement's just three movement. Doesn't matter who you are, what you are, it's three movement. Unless it says plus two move on your character card. Right? I mean, it's just basic stuff like that that's really nice. It's not bogged down in the technical details of everything. Very streamlined. Uh, the, the How you activate stuff, you place your savagery tokens, and you move them, and then you use your action with them. Super simple. You roll your attack. Once you're done manipulating your roll, then the defender can choose to defend against that, which is another bonus, actually. So I'll get to that in a moment. But just the, the rules and how the game is set up, the game flow, it just makes sense. There's only two phases. you got your replenish phase and your activation phase. That's it. You do four rounds. Your round ends when you can't do any more. Uh, it just, it, it solves a lot of problems when it comes to a lot of skirmish games where there's a big wall of entry here, uh, where it's just hard to kind of get into it and it's hard to ease into it. This, you can pick up and, and go, this could be your first skirmish game. You'd be totally fine. And if you aren't, if it's not your first skirmish game, you're going to find a ton here still to enjoy. So part of that game flow is great because you you can kind of stop at several different points. So each, you, you know, you go and you battle and then you're, you're the attacker, they're the defender, then they're the attacker, you're the defender. So you do two battles in each clash and you can stop after a clash or you can stop after each battle. And so that's what we did. We actually did a battle and stopped and then did a battle again. Uh, because you're logging everything at the end anyway, and it, that goes real quick. It's not a whole lot of overhead at all. You're like, how many pieces, how many left hands did I get? They're all left hands. Um, how many, 
how many I don't know uh, hate did I get? And then you just mark that down and you, you just kind of, it's a very quick checklist thing and then you're done and you have it marked down and you could pack it up and go. And that's fine. Uh, and, and in fact, that's, that's really nice that it does that. So it's very dynamic in how long it takes. You can kind of piecemeal this out however much you're comfortable with. Though, I imagine if you do one, you're going to want to do the other. Just because whoever lost is going to, oh, I'm going to win the next time. Or, or uh, oh, you know, my, my dice selectus wasn't that good, so it's going to get back this next battle. I need to finish this battle so I can still come out ahead in some way. Uh, which is great. Or I got this cool upgrade now after that, and so that's that's always fun too. Uh, so that's really good. And speaking of stopping and going, the setup and teardown is really, really nice here. It, it's way quicker than you would think. There's not a ton of components. And what components there are, they, it's cool when you're not, did include a, a tray that you can just pull out and leave it there. All my savagery, all my resources, all of my hate, my innocence tokens, the markers, all of that stuff I just left in the tray. I set it right by the board and it's there. I didn't have to undo anything except open up the bag, uh, which is great. First of all, everything comes in a bag, which is also awesome. Um, but it just, and even all the like upgrades, I just left everything, all the cards there. It's easy. And then because it's only two player, you get their tribe, you have your tribe. There, 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 you know, only a certain amount of people there, obviously. It can get a little bit more complex if you get a whole lot of mercenaries. And I mean, you can't get a whole lot of mercenaries, but it can get a little complex there. But it's, it, trust me, it's one of the better setup and teardown games I have played. Really quick and easy to put it in there. Um, one of the nice things is the scenario tray. So when you're actually picking a mission, it'll put, and it uses symbols, but the symbols are very easy to understand because there's really, there's only the prince, mercenary, shaman, warrior, champion, and young blood. That seems like a lot, but it's not, trust me. So super simple to do that. It tells you where everything goes. It tells you how to place the terrain. It just, it's a breeze and it's really nice. Tear down is a little bit more complex. Uh, not so bad because you only have two tribes to put up, but as is typical these days, Kulmini Knots is putting a clear tray without any kind of real great indication of where things go. Um, and so if you are playing with multiple people or have a lot of mercenaries, sometimes you got to remember and figure out where where the mini goes and you're playing the game of like, okay, does it fit here? It sort of fits there. Oh no, that goes there and then this one goes over here. Uh, kind of a bummer because even when you have the tribe, it doesn't mean you know which you know, does, does the warrior three go in this one or this one? I, I hate that. I, I, I want a, an actual picture of like where, where these things go. That's easy to do. They'll put it on like the bottom of the box. So that's like putting the, you know, do not turn over pizza on the bottom of the pizza box. That's, that's kind of silly. Um, so, but overall happy with that tear down set up super easy, big breeze, and you can, uh, stop really at all sorts of uh, points within a clash or within a campaign. Now, speaking of the campaign, the campaign is so much fun. I love that uh, you can up, I mean, you can upgrade your tribe, your units, you can upgrade your village, you can really make it you, which is awesome. It helps so much with replayability. It, it helps so much with, you know, just theme and the meta of everything. And you can have one souped up young blood that's like, this dude's like a champion young blood. He's like this awesome dude. Or you can have this crazy ninja guy that can like jump and move faster and do all these things. Um, and he's just like, you know, maybe he's a big hulking warrior too, which is just silly. So you end up like making names for these characters, which goes even better because you would like keep track of their deaths and stuff like that. It, it meshes well with the, the theme meshes well with the mechanics and they breed stories, which I love. So that's another pro. Not only are you upgrading your guys, but when you lose that guy that's been upgraded, you feel so bad. Or if you're finally kill that guy who had killed you like four times and he had this nickname that, you know, made fun of your guy who died the first time and he's been upgraded and all that kind of stuff. That is fantastic. It's great. But it's more than that. Going back to the upgrades, the upgrades make sense within the theme. Like, they're just fun. So there's there's an upgrade where if you're carrying a body, you can actually roll more defense. In other words, you're using him as a meat shield. Like, <laughs> you know, you you threw your 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 thing at me, but I just blocked with your own guys that I'm holding. That's that's funny. It's 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 great. There's a lot of laughs, a lot of chuckling, a lot of name calling. It it, it for a skirmish type game that is competitive like this, it's fantastic when you can. It, it's I don't want to say take that because it has a whole different meaning within board games, but it is very much a a thing where. The, the characters become themselves and you're interacting with their units more than them. In other words, if I'm playing against my friend, I'm not playing necessarily against him. I'm playing against his people. 
and it's his people that I don't like, not him. And it, it and that transition helps with the whole name calling and all that. It, it's great. Trust me, it breathes this kind of fun time that any, I think, board game needs to. And uh, I'm a huge fan of that. A huge fan. Speaking of replayability, uh, obviously you got all the upgrades, but all the tribes, all the tribes interact differently. Uh, so, th like, there are tribes that will, you know, lay down traps that can go hidden. So they're kind of like these ninja things. Or there's ones that can poison your guys. Or, you know, so they'll get, you know, KO'd later on. Or there are, you know, just berserker ones. Or ones that deal better with support. Or uh, some guys are really strong at first, but they get weaker and weaker over time. And you play them fundamentally different. Some you keep bunched together. Some you spread out. Some you're just trying to play as quickly as possible. Uh, uh, others, uh, I mean, the game mechanics are nuanced enough, and this is why I think seasoned skirmish players would even appreciate it, where there's a strategy where maybe you want to end your turn as early as possible, because if you've done everything you want to do and then you're done, the round ends when you don't have anything else to do, when you have no other units to activate or you're out of savagery tokens. Irregardless of the other player, the player might have had other plans and you can end it early. Additionally, you can make them get more early, because the dice in the game can actually spawn uh, savagery tokens, so you can hope to maybe... Uh, undo that. So the the game mechanics are simple. It's, hey, it ends if you can't do anything. That's super simple, easy to understand. However, it's complex enough where you can manipulate it. You can use it to your advantage, and that's awesome. Speaking of the dice manipulation, first of all, this game has fantastic dice manipulation. It's it's not bad at all. You can do rerolls. You can add dice. It, you know the the stats going in. There's no um like oh I have this card here that's gonna you know trick you and so you had no idea I had it and it just kind of surprised you. All their all their cards are face up except their secret mission and so you can see what they can do. You know what they're capable of. You know what support they'll have and you can judge those odds on your own, which is fantastic. However, and this is kind of funny. I'm a big proponent of making a great first impression. If a board game doesn't make a great first impression, it rarely will get played again. And so that's a huge bummer. If 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 nobody had a good time or it was kind of lackluster, then it's less likely that they're going to go and be like, oh, let's play that game again, that we kind of had fun, it was kind of okay, or it was kind of crummy, instead of the games we know we like. Um, especially with skirmish games where, you know, uh, uh, this one has a campaign, so at least you'll feel like you want to... Uh, finish the campaign perhaps but you know that can be a real big bummer you want to make sure that first impression is awesome and the worst impression hate will leave you is that first game now i still enjoyed my first game don't get me wrong and i lost uh but i still had a lot of fun playing it and uh it was, it, I'm, I'm excited to keep playing more however because of the upgrade system where you slowly be are able to reroll more or change your movement more or add more dice and this is this dice manipulation come there your upgrades get to where your people can do more maybe more people are arranged than just your young bloods you know you get that kind of good stuff later in the campaign after a few battles so your first battle is actually the le least amount of fun which is kind of funny i i mean i still enjoyed it don't get me wrong it's not a pro or a con it's an interesting thing i noted that this game gets better over time the more you play it the more fun you'll have now one final note here as somebody who is slightly colorblind the coloration on the actual uh units can be hard sometimes uh, especially for me the two light green ones there's like a, a there's a dark green i forget if there's three or four greens either way they're just different shades and especially if you don't see them right next to each other you'll I'll, I, i've mistaken one for another the same actually with the purple isn't that great so the purple looks kind of too much like one of the blues and um i really kind of struggled with that i would have i would have liked either more you know a, a, a bigger change of coloration on the uh, the uh, miniatures themselves, or perhaps some symbology of some kind. Uh, I'm not sure which, but it did kind of throw me for a loop. On the cards, I tended to do really well. On the miniatures and the colored bases, I did really struggle with that, and that is kind of unfortunate. All right, it's conclusion time. So I think you kind of can tell I did really enjoy this game. I had a lot of fun, very satisfied with it. Shipping could have been better, board could have been better, colors could have been better. Like There's a few things that I obviously I can always find something to complain about, um, but the game is just darn fun. It's great. It's a blast to play. It's easy to set up. I don't feel like any part of it's a chore. None of it is. Every single part I'm having fun. The turns go quick. They're simple. Uh, you know, the, uh, it, it, there's very little downtime. It's just, it, it, it's very, very good. And actually kind of reminiscent of something like, um, Blood Rage or Rising Sun, where you're, you feel almost, both limited and free so because you know you're just concerned you start with only those five savagery tokens and you're like 
I can move guys maybe three times. I can't even reactivate them. I mean, it just, uh, you know, you feel like you don't have a lot of options, but then you end up finding all these different ways to do stuff in it. It's, it's great fun, whether you're chewing it, you're playing it as your first skirmish ever. Um, it's super easy to understand, super easy to get into it, and you can play efficiently still just with your basic understanding and some logical reasoning. However, if you're coming from like a Warhammer or a Malifaux or some more war game skirmish type thing where you're used to unique units and positioning and turn order and different skills, there's a lot here for you even with that, except it costs way less, uh, takes up less space, and uh, is a whole different experience. So. Highly recommended, no matter pretty much who you are. As long as you're okay with the theme, which for me, it was actually a bonus. I think it's great. Very Mad max kind of like. Um, then I think you're going to enjoy hate. So it is Kickstarter exclusive. I don't know if you'll be able to get it. If you can find it secondhand, if you can, uh, you know, find it at your friend local gaming store. Recommended from, from me anyway. All right, guys. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to get back to painting some more minis and waiting for some other... Uh, campaigns to get here. I hear there's word about like uh, uh, Black Rose Wars and I hear there's something about um, Joan of Arc. I, I, I don't know something about that. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> there's some stuff in the pipeline that should be coming uh, to the channel soon. So if you want to know more about that and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Click the little bell icon. You'll know when I do get it. You can see my unboxing, hear my thoughts about the components in detail there. I'll do a first impression as always and paint some miniatures. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.